Mr. Locario and Miles Cunningham. This is that real shit, not that fake shit. The only radio show that's not afraid to tell you the truth about the game. This is the Bad Boy Radio Show. Remember, the truth is inside you. All right, people, what's popping? What's going on? What up? to the Bad Boy Show with Mr. Locario and Miles Cunningham. What's What's good, Miles? What's poppin'? Yo, nigga. <laughs> you trying to get it done. Sometimes you got to stay away for 24 fucking hours. You feel exactly. me? Exactly. I, I just called Miles and, and he, was like, he was like, yo, I ain't, I ain't sleep yet. You feel me? And, and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm on the road. I'm out here in D.C. and shit. You know, so my, my mic might sound different because I'm using a computer mic and shit today. So, you know, but we got oh, to get it. We got to do what we got to do. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know. Rich niggas because we are we are here bringing it to you no matter what you know exactly what I mean? and, and fuck and, that shit and rich niggas is the only ones that can sleep even though they don't sleep because exactly they're trying to get more money you feel me but we we gonna make it happen but anyway so in this episode we're gonna be talking about how to test women okay so this is you know how to test them to see if they feeling you to see if they cooperate to see if they on some dumb shit you feel what I'm saying so you gotta like do certain things to to see what's popping so you don't waste your time and energy or you know you don't get yourself into some bullshit you feel what i'm saying so we're gonna we're gonna talk about that shit today but um, yeah. before we get into that we're gonna take a quick commercial break um and when we come back we're gonna get into some news all right so you guys are listening to the bad boy show hey what's up it's dating and life coach mr locario go to badboymembership.com and master the dating game by joining my bad boy membership program in this program you'll receive 45 through 90 minute easy to follow step-by-step dating advice tutorials that's guaranteed to help you attract date and have sex with beautiful women join the bad boy membership today by going to badboymembership.com that's badboymembership.com yeah, yeah, we're back. We are back on uh-huh. the Bad Boy Show. You feel me? So, man, there's this some um, a uh, couple a couple of things happening. Just just a, just a few things. So, uh, first thing, uh, you know, in the rap world, you do J Cole uh, dropped a song called "False Prophets," where he was going at uh, Kanye West and Wale. Okay, so he's basically saying, yo, this nigga Kanye West, you know, he ain't who he seems to be. And, you know, I used to look up to this nigga, but he, you know, he act one way, but in his lyrics, he be, you know, portraying himself a certain way. I don't get what the fuck is going on with this nigga. You know what I'm saying? And he was basically saying about Wale, like, you know, Wale be crying like a bitch, talking about nobody don't like him. And he's like, nigga, who the fuck cares? You got money, you got fans, do your fucking thing. You feel me? And... You know, the thing is, you know, I was never really like a big J. Cole fan. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I used to always tell Miles about this. I was like, J. Cole reminds me of that nigga you know that raps, but you 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 never really thought he was going to make it. That's that's who I thought J. Cole was. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nigga, you ain't got no swag. You mad boring. You know what I'm saying? Like... Just one of them niggas around your way that spit, but you was like, this nigga ain't going, he ain't going to make it. But that that's who J Cole is to me. But I I I I respect him on this tip where he actually, you know, uh, spit out some 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 real shit because people were saying it. They was like saying, is it a diss or is it like? Because it, it, to me, it don't seem like a diss. It just seemed like some real shit. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And, and right. I feel like that's what's missing in a rap game where it's like. All these niggas always front and talking about, you know, they need money and all that. That's cool and all of that. And then and then niggas, you know, they'll do diss songs here and there. And that's cool. But you don't never really hear like a real ass song, like like a niggas pulling his boy to the side and saying, yo, my nigga, you, you fucking up. Like, what you doing? You feel what I'm saying? Like, right. what, is this, what is this bullshit you doing? You feel what I'm saying? Like, so, so I appreciate that shit. You know what I mean? So it's like, but the thing was, I especially appreciated the, the part where he was talking about Wale, he was like, yo, nigga, like, like, stop acting like a bitch. Like, that, yo, Wale used to get on my nerves with that shit. Like, if you ever watch his interviews on The Breakfast Club, he'd be crying about how, oh, niggas don't fuck with him, and, you know, how come this, and how come that? And I'm like, dude, like, who cares, my nigga? Like, yo, you're a millionaire. 
You ever see what I'm saying? You travel around the world. You do the things that, that you love to do. What are you complaining about? You feel what I'm saying? Right. But, but that's what happened to niggas when they get in a certain uh, situations where, you know, you, you start to, to, to feed off your ego and then you want to be the top nigga. And then you thinking, oh, how come niggas ain't sweating me like Drake? How come niggas ain't, you know, putting me in the Kendrick Lamar, uh, uh, you know, limelight and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, oh, my God, these niggas is... Like yo, just get your money and and shut the fuck up. Like I don't I don't get that shit. I don't fucking get that shit. <laughs> yo, I, I totally agree with. I mean, I because I haven't heard the song. I mean, I heard like a little bit of the song, mm-hmm. but I just thought it was like just something you were talking about rappers in general. I heard like a little clip, right. and somebody was making a point about Lil Yachty and these you know these other young niggas that like don't really know how to rap but niggas is calling them rappers anyway right right <laughs> but um first off i like i do agree based on what you're saying i do agree that wiley's a bitch and he needs to either make hot tracks and keep his mouth shut right or you know kill himself one or one or the <laughs> other like because I, I really don't i really i mean you, i mean you know it's, it's all right I mean, cause shit, I do it. Like you know, you recognize things that you wish you could, you wish you could change. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like if if, if you recognize things that you wish you could change, that's that's cool because that's what you know life is about. Sometimes, sometimes you gotta understand the problem before you can fix it. So if you recognize and shit, you know, then you gotta you know, figure out how to fix it. Then you fix it. But to sit there and just bitch, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like, how long has it been since you heard, like, Wale out with some shit? You know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. I know. Like, it makes me think. It makes me, like, the nigga got Seinfeld calling him one of his top five rappers. Right. Seinfeld, my nigga, the richest <laughs> fucking comedian in the world. <laughs> and you still complaining about anything? Right. And, and Like, I would just be out here putting out tracks every week, even if it was bullshit. Mm-hmm. I would just be, you know, just be... Just be happy at the fact that a nigga like Seinfeld is co-signing me and just use that to the best of my ability to um to get my name everywhere. You hear what I'm saying? Right, right. I don't give a fuck who likes me or not. Like the fact that I'm the fact that you see my name everywhere means more because now I can set myself up for endorsements, other business moves, you know, just anything. You get what I'm saying? Right, right. But to sit there and worry about who likes you and who don't like you and if you're not as popular as Drake or whatever, like come on, son, that's right. Now I don't I don't really know what he said about Kanye, but you know that's I think that's a matter of opinion. Like we don't really know what's going on with Kanye, right. and Kanye is making that type of money where he can seem crazy, but you don't really know what's actually going on. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right. Like everybody, everybody thinks that Prince died of fucking um of painkiller overdose. Mm-hmm. But you don't really know for sure. You see what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Um, everybody thinks that Michael Jackson died from painkiller overdose, but we don't really know for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we we know that fucking <clears throat> Dave Chappelle dropped everything and went to Africa, and a lot of people talked a lot of shit about him being crazy, going to do drugs, all this shit. But we don't really know. Right. So right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You know, I, I'm cool with with J Cole. I think he's a good rapper, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't say nothing about Kanye West right now. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. I wouldn't say I wouldn't I wouldn't find a reason to say anything about Kanye West right now unless it was positive. Yo, I hope you I hope that nigga's all right type of thing. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. I think because I think in the song it was basically sort of saying like he feel like Kanye West sort of portrayed himself as like this guy who you know was for the the people and for the music but then at the same time you know it's it, he seems he's like saying it's sort of contradictory because you know he he's at the same time presenting himself as like a kardashian type of dude or like like a two-faced type of nigga because he's like yo jay jay ain't call me but he's basically saying like kanye got a lot of niggas that been trying to holler at him that he ain't called you feel what i'm saying so it's like how you right. calling out Jay right. for not calling you, but you ain't calling other niggas? You know what I mean? Like, that's the same thing Talib Kweli was saying to, to Kanye. Like, yo, niggas been trying to holler at you, but you ain't hollering back. So it's the same shit. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, right, right. it's kind of like that type of shit. But, you know, that's that, I mean, that's that injury, that. industry I shit. That. You know? I, don't, I don't really see that because, um, you know, they, you know, a lot, a lot of times niggas is, is hypocrites and they don't even realize, you know what I'm saying? Right. But again, at this point in time, like, 
I just still wouldn't say nothing about the nigga because the people got him, son. Right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> like the people got him right now. Like mm-hmm. it's not like he's out and about. Right. You know, it's not like he just came out with an album and you know, and he's he's the regular Kanye West that we know right now. Like, right. you know, he's putting out full samples and spitting and doing his fashion shit and running all over the place acting, you know, like Kanye. It's right. not like that. The nigga is, we don't really know what's happening to Kanye right now. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Like, based on what's going on, Kanye West could literally, you know how they be talking about that clone shit? Right. Like, these, these conspiracy theories niggas be talking about that clone shit? Mm-hmm. Kanye could literally, literally right now, be, be getting lobotomized mm-hmm. or being killed off and cloned and coming back as a new nigga to fucking be a tool for these for these uh for the for the Illuminati or whatever you want to call it. You understand right, what I'm right, saying? Right. <laughs> so right now, today, it's just I just can't I can't fuck with you saying shit about somebody like Kanye. Right. Because on one side, yes, he's probably a hypocrite. Yes, he probably complains about dumb shit and you know, it, it doesn't matter if Jay Z called you or not. But on the next side, son, Kanye West, let's not forget that Kanye West brought hip hop to a to a fucking a different level, son. Right, right. Kanye West fucking Kanye West made niggas drop out of college. I, I was I was re- I was watching videos the, the other week about the niggas. Niggas was talking about the fact that Kanye West made me go follow my dreams. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, like Kanye West is a different nigga, son. I just wouldn't say nothing about him right now. Right. That's just me personally. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because it's, cause Kanye West is doing shit that niggas would like, like, like the fucking uh, album Jesus, it awaits the heartbreak. Like the type of shit that he do with music, as far as hip hop is concerned. Right. A lot of niggas would never take the chance to do that type of shit, homie. Mm-hmm. And that's the type of shit that allows hip hop to be as big as it is because he's mixing a whole lot of shit into the pot to bring other people in to let niggas like you mm. be able to fucking spit right, your right. shit exactly. and for them to call it hot. You right. see what I'm saying? Right, that's true. That's remember, true. remember when Kanye West came in the shit, he was sitting right there in front of Jay Z and Dame Dash, mm. showing them beats and spitting for them, and none of them thought he could he could do anything. They, none of them wanted to fucking sign him. At right, first, right? Right. And then he becomes a fucking mega, mega fucking artist. And he married Kim Kardashian, which is arguably the hottest bitch in the world. Mm-hmm. And then look at his bitch before that. Like, I'm not really trying to base anything off of the type of bitch a nigga get. But I'm just saying, like, you thought he was nothing. Like, the nigga was in your face. You thought he was just a little beat maker. And then he gave you John Legend. He brought back fucking Common. He brought back Common. Who gave a fuck about Common? Common's right. doing movies now. <laughs> right. Literally because of Kanye West. Right. <laughs> yeah, real talk. Real talk. Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle um was able to fucking amass amass nearly amass um a fifty five million dollar contract for the second season. Literally because of the type of music the type of music that Kanye West brought to him. Kanye West brought fucking, he, he brought back Tyler Quali. He brought back niggas like Mo Step. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? With, with with the collaborations and the shit he was doing. Right, right. He he made us know who the fuck Kid Cudi was. Yeah, it's, like, it's a lot of shit. Yo, the it's type of shit that Kanye West did, son. Yo, I watched these documentaries the other day, and they talked about just the way that Kanye West uses voice to stretch the boundaries of music like how he does he synthesizes his voice like all right you know that song bound bound by bound to fall in love when he was on the bike with, with Kim kardashian right right and the fucking the, the beat is literally just a old sample loop mm-hmm. and then it pauses and then you hear a fucking white woman come in and say uh-huh honey right <laughs> and the fucking beat is hot to death right <laughs> like there's no drums in the shit right and the shit niggas out here selling millions across the world. And right now the people got him. Literally, he's like the fucking, arguably the most creative fucking nigger mm. on the planet. Mm. And you gonna wait till the people get him to say something about him? Right, right. And you're supposed to be, you a big horse. You're supposed to be a conscious nigga. Right. You're supposed to know about, yo, the niggas got him. You, you of all people should know, like, yo, they got him. Mm-hmm. They got our nigga. Right, right. You understand what I'm saying? And you over here disparaging him? I can't really, I just, I just don't, I can't. 
He's like, I can't. can't I mean, maybe that. I'm not, and I'm not, and I'm not taking away from the relevance of what he's saying. I just think the timing is very, very disrespectfully wrong at this point. Right, That's all right, I'm saying. Right. You see what I'm saying? That's crazy. Because they got to get yo. I feel, I feel fucked up. I feel fucked up. It's like. It's like you gonna wait till they, they 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 fucking take this nigga away in handcuffs and call him crazy for you to say some shit. No, son. Right, that was right. that's what I always hated about black people. Like like Bush, you know, Bush could have done anything. Reagan could have done anything, you know. And and you know, we'll we'll rap about it or we'll we'll say some shit. But we'll but it's it's kind of like to me they they would glorify something that Ronald Reagan did to our society when he brought crack into the into the into the fold by right. rapping about it. Look how much money these rappers made off of talking about crack and mm. selling crack and doing this and doing that, right? Right. Now you're supposed to call yourself conscious, but you're gonna wait till our mo- one of our most creative artists of our time mm. get caught by the people right. to fucking say some shit. Right. <laughs> it's crazy. I just, you know, I just, I don't know. I mean, I'm sorry to be on the rant about this one thing, but nah, keep keep going, keep going, nigga. <laughs> Now I feel you. It's, it's it's wild though. It's wild how that shit happens. That shit is wild, man. Now I feel you on that. I feel you on that shit. Trust me, because you know, it's it, it's 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 one of the things. That's what I, I was listening to this audio from this dude, and he was saying that. Uh, you remember when Kanye was talking about yo, don't send your, you know, he's saying to Jay, don't send your killers at me. You feel right. what I'm saying? He was like, how that's what Kanye was talking about the shit Jay Cole doing. He was like. His killers ain't literally killer killers, but he's talking about industry killers. Like he's like he feel like J Cole is the nigga that they sent to you know holla at this nigga Kanye. You feel what I'm saying? Like, and then that could be it. You're right. That that sounds very plausible. That sounds very fucking plausible because yo, a lot of yo kids love J Cole, son. Right, right. Like young young kids, young like a lot of the niggas that that fuck with like niggas like Lil Yachty and Black Kodak and them mm-hmm. and them these young niggas that are to me just to me personally kind of whack. Right. They still respect a, a a nigga like J Cole. You see right, what I'm saying? Right. Right. So that means his influence also means something heavy too because you have the ear of the younger generation and then you over here you you're disparaging Kanye West in this situation. It's 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 gonna make it's gonna think about what it's gonna do for the future of any other rap nigga who's having trouble expressing the truth in what they're seeing in the whole Hollywood Illuminati situation, right? Right, right. The young kids is gonna be looking at J Cole like, oh well, J Cole's a smart, conscious dude. So if he says Kanye West is a two faced nigga, then you know maybe all rappers who are out here trying to tell the truth and 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 is having trouble, you know, figuring out the best way to expose the truth. Maybe I shouldn't listen to them neither. You see what I'm saying? Right, right, right. <laughs> it's wild, man. It's, it's deeper, wild. yo, it's deeper than rap, son. Y'all niggas gotta understand. It's deeper than rap, son. Right, right. It's deeper than just the words coming out your fucking mouth. Like, I was watching this doc- this is a documentary. I mean, and you know, we talk about hip hop a lot on this this show. So if um <clears throat> anybody is interested, there's a documentary on it's a it's a multi part documentary too. It's like a whole season of the shit on Netflix called um, Hip Hop Evolution or H- Evolution of Hip Hop. Right. And it, it it just has this kid. He's walking around meeting with all of these rappers, and he, he goes through different eras of hip hop and talks about this. But there's a lot, yo. There's a lot of politics involved with hip, with hip hop and rap and you know white supremacy. There's a lot of elements. There's a lot of things going on. It's deeper than just a nigga going into a booth. And spitting and trying to sell records, man, is deep. Right, right. Okay, because then you got to understand something about music. Music, like a lot of times, you'll hear people say, like, if you look over history books and shit, they'll say that music and dancing is the devil's work. Like right, they'll they'll right. talk about the god of dance or the god of uh, you know the, the god of music is like the the devil. Mm-hmm. And the reason is because the reason why it's it's always been said that way in a, in a clear, concise you know, up-to-date reason, the clear, concise, up-to-date reason is the fact that music has the ability to influence. You understand? Right, right. It has a great ability to influence because the melodies do something to your to your mind subconsciously, and then what the work being said on top of it can change the, the views of a whole generation. Like, it's not a game. Right, right. So J. Cole better be fucking careful. 
You right. have to be more careful than that, son. Mm -hmm. the, the, this rap shit is crazy. So you said that the hip hop documentary is on where? It's on Netflix? Yeah, it's on Netflix. It's called um, Hip Hop Evolution or the Evolution of Hip Hop. But just search Evolution of Hip Hop and you, you, you'll find it. It's, it's really not that hard. I just can't remember which word comes first at the moment. But I was watching it last night and it, it takes you through a lot of different, like it takes you through stages. Like they started out talking about, um, you know, like the like the, where rap actually came from, you mm -hmm. know, and they were saying how like niggas took, you know, R&B joints and rock and roll joints and disco joints and only played the part where the, the drum, the drums broke down. Right. You know, right. so they, took, they put that part on the loop and, um, and that's what that, and then somebody would at first, literally, literally at first niggas was just calling, getting on the mic to tell niggas, yo, your mom's is waiting for you outside or you, you know, you double parked and they're about to tell your car type of shit. Right. And then niggas just started doing shout outs. And, but they was telling, they was also telling you how, it was like old, like Chuck Berry type niggas. There was a dude called The Judge, and he had a like an old R&B blues album. And at the beginning of one of the songs, he had a rap. Like he actually was saying, you know, this is The Judge, and he, The Judge don't waste no time, and blah, blah, blah. But he wasn't really a rapper. He was literally like a blues singer. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, yeah. But because he wanted to stylize himself as being The Judge, it sounded like a rap. And, you know, they were showing me how Grandmaster Kaz and a bunch of dudes they actually listen to old shit like that, and that's where they got the style of rap to actually rap from. You know what nice, I mean? Nice, nice. That's what's so up. It's, yeah, it's man. a whole lot of stuff, but it's real deep is what I'm saying. Yeah, man. You guys got to check that shit. Check it and see what's popping. Yeah, man. Oh, my goodness. So, um... Yo, so free Kanye West, man. Fuck these niggas, man. That... <laughs> really. Oh, man. So, in other news, um... There was a, a a fire at an Oakland concert, and I think it said about like thirty or forty people was uh, found dead. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know, I, I don't even know what concert it was. I don't know exactly how it uh, happened. I, I didn't get enough time to check the details. Details, but you know, right. it was uh, you know it was a concert. So, you know, a lot of people, some people got injured. Um, a whole bunch of people died and shit. And it's just it's it's just fucked up. Like how you know shit just happens. And it's like right. you never fucking know, man. You never know when the shit's gonna fucking go down. That's that's the crazy shit about life, man. You just be like, because we all assume, you know, we be talking about oh, in, in the next ten years, I'm like, nigga, you could be dead in five minutes, my nigga. <laughs> Pretty much. So, so you know, so uh, you know, um, it's 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 crazy, and and hope all the people that uh, you know, the families are, you know, they going through it and all that other stuff. So, you know, they gotta do what they gotta do to. Uh, you know, cope and make that happen. You feel me? So you know, it, it goes down. Now, in um other news, oh my goodness, this shit, this shit, this shit is so retarded. But I, it's like I'm glad this happened. I'm not, I'm not glad it happened, but I'm glad it happened. So basically, and the reason why I'm saying I'm glad it happened, hold is on one second, hold <laughs> on one second. Let me, because I'm on the, I'm on the joint. Okay, so. I just wanted to give more information because I don't want to be one of them shows that don't give enough information. <laughs> hold on. So, but hold your thought though, because you know, whatever, right. you could move to the next thing. But I just want to say, so it says, officials fear up to 40 dead in fire during concert at Oakland Warehouse. Um, right. So it, it looks like it was a, um, it was like a, authority said they would walk through the night to recover more victims of a deadly fire that raced through a converted warehouse with people attending a Friday night concert in Oakland. Nine bodies have been recovered by the Alameda County Sheriff Sergeant Ray Kelly said officials were prepared for up to 40 fatalities. He said that many of those inside the warehouse were young, some from foreign countries. Um, so it seemed like it was like a, um, a independent artist concert. Right. Um, they don't know what, the, what caused the fire just yet. It, the story is really fresh, so, you know. Right, yeah, that's what I was because yeah, because when I looked it up, they didn't really, they didn't really have too much details. They're probably gonna you know, right. continue the story as they find out more shit. You know what I'm saying? So um, it says uh, somebody says witness described horrific fight for several. Oh, uh, it was a fight for people trying to survive the flames. They were trying to get out of the space. Um, so I guess it wasn't, it wasn't enough exits for the amount of people that were in. This is why. Real quick, this is why there's an occupancy, you know, um, limit. Right, right, exactly. Let me tell you, you can't have more than, you know, 500 people within the space because depending on what goes down, you need people to be able to get out fast. 
You know what I'm saying? And if you if you, if you don't have any enough doors and shit like that, people can't get out. And this type of shit has happened. Then Al Garcia, who owns the store next door to the warehouse, that he talked to two people who said there were 17 and 18 years old who got out of the building. Uh, he said his day. He said that black balloon smoke was coming down the stairs. They couldn't see anything in front of them or behind them. The only reason they got out was they heard voices outside. The voices directed them to where they were going. Right. So, yeah. Right. That's crazy, man. You know, every time you hear shit like that, you be like, God damn, man, that's that's wild. But, you know. Yeah, you got to be, yeah, like, you got to be, um, you got to be vigilant. You enjoy yourself. But I always tell people, like, if I'm, you know, anybody that, that I fuck with, and they say they're going someplace, I always tell them to, to have it, to be, pay attention to your 360 mm-hmm. and always know where your exit is. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Like, always exactly. know a way that you can get out of whatever situation you're in. Mm-hmm. Pretty that much. Shit is real talk. Pretty much. I think, I think especially uh, people from the hood, sort of, uh, <laughs> we, we got that, like, in us. We always, like, I don't know what it is, no matter where I'm at or no matter where I'm going, it's, like, automatic. You know what I mean? Like, I'm looking around. I'm looking who's at where, at what point. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Cause, right. You know, it should be just popping off at any time. You feel me? But um, yep. but yeah. But another news. What I was saying about this story that I that I I'm glad that it happened, but I'm not glad, but I am glad is because in this right. story there's a retired black cop. His name is uh, R- Ronald Lanier, and he was shopping in uh, a Western Beef supermarket in Mineola on November 30th. When he was tackled, handcuffed, and beaten by officers um, with the Garden City Police Department, and and the thing is, he told them because he was he was he's a former cop, so he was telling them like, "Yo, I'm I'm one of you guys. I'm a cop. You feel me?" But then right. they beat his ass because he was black. So the reason why I'm saying I'm glad is because he got his nigger wake up call. You feel what I'm saying? Right. Because right. He, you, he thought, "Oh, well, I'm a cop." So they wouldn't do that to me. You feel what I'm saying? But it's like, no, they they don't care that you a cop. You understand? You were you right. a nigger first before you a cop. That's how they look at it. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So you just got, and, and, and this, that's the sad part is that the fact that you would even think or you would even have that mentality of, hey, you know, don't do this to me. I'm one of you guys. So you should like, it ain't even like, damn, you know, it's fucked up that the police the, the police that I was a part of or, you know, does this to black people. That's not even the, the fucking, uh, a, you know, narrative. It's like, hey, don't do this to me. Fuck all those other niggas. But I'm I'm one of you guys. It's like, nah, like this shit don't go down like that. And then it's funny because look, they have a video of it on World Star and they're, you know, they interviewing the guy and this dude is fucking crying and shit. You know, he's like, oh, I can't believe this happened. And I'm like. And, and and one one part of me, I'm thinking, okay, I hope he's crying just to, you know, because he's trying to set up a lawsuit. You feel what I'm saying? So he was like, oh, I was so distressed and yada, 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 and get some paper. You feel what I'm saying? But right. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm like, I hope you ain't crying because you just crying. You understand? And you emotional about the shit. Because I'm like, nigga, man the fuck up. Don't be crying on TV in front of these fuckers and having them think you weak. You feel what I'm saying? Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, like, yo, but, but the thing, that's the thing though. It's like, you know, and, and the reason why I said, I'm kind of glad it happened because also it lets, it shows other black people like what time it is. You feel what I'm saying? Like, yo, exactly. it's yep. like, they don't give a fuck. My nigga, like, what do you, you, you know what I'm saying? You thought being a cop was going to save you from the shit. And, and this is the thing where I think I'm like, I could, I don't understand how you would want to be a cop as a black person. Like, I, I just don't get it. It, it reminds me of like, men who want to be like feminists like i don't i don't get the shit you know what i'm saying right, like, you, right. <laughs> like it's like a man that's a feminist and then get mad that some some feminist chick accuse him of street harassment or uh sexually assaulting her objectifying her it's like nigga what you thought this was son you feel what i'm saying like right. you you think it's i'm like wow like that's well i'm gonna see I'm gonna go back to the point I was trying to make about music and how deep it could get. Like, right. back at a certain time, those same niggas who nowadays who would say, "Oh, I want to be a cop," or because a lot of dudes you highlight them and be like, "Yo, why would why would you want to become a cop?" And they'll say shit like, "Oh, well, 
I want to improve my neighborhood and, you know, I need a job. You know, I got to, I got to feed my family. I got to do this. I got to do that. Right. 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 Now, those same niggas, of, of, like a few decades ago, those niggas would have said, you know, I want to start and join the Nation of Islam or the Black Panther Party. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's an energy shift. It's an energy shift. Right. Where it's like, well, you know, I want to keep food in my mouth, improve my community, and protect my people in, in my neighborhood. So back in the day, when 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 we was when we was when we had niggas like Curtis Mayfield, you know, post, like singing about real shit, niggas was becoming the Black Panthers and joining the Nation of Islam and doing shit. Right. When we had niggas like um, Stevie Wonder talking about, you know, like you know, real shit. You know, a, a, a black boy is born in a hard time Mississippi. When he goes to the city, he's living just enough for the city, and he understands white supremacy and is fucking him up. Right. That's the energy. Nowadays, we got niggas just talking about, yo, I got to get that paper so I can front with these bitches. Exactly. <laughs> you feel me? So it's like, exactly. yo, just go get a job, whatever. Like, yeah, it's, it's white supremacy, but I need I need to be fly, nigga. I need to pay my rent, and I need to be able to take a bitch out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. <laughs> so you, you switch over to, well, shit, just become a cop then. Right, exactly. And then some of them start thinking, well, maybe if I become a cop, you know, I'll be protected. You know, because I'm I'm a blue dude just like them. I'm not a black dude anymore. I'm a blue dude. Exactly, exactly. That's what they think. You know, yeah. nigga, you're still a fucking nigga. But <laughs> the, 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 you know, the energy shift happened through the music and through the evolution of society and mm-hmm. what's going on. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. That's the point I was trying to make about how music could be so deep and what, what we do as a people and how we see things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> real talk, man. Real fucking talk. So in, in, in other news, this... uh. <laughs> Uh, you know more racism so there's uh, uh <laughs> it never stops it and, uh, never so this professor her name is uh dr michelle heron she called uh michelle obama a monkey face and oh my it god was a, it was <laughs> she it was a picture of michelle obama yelling uh and then she put under the comment monkey face and poor abonic english and she says there i feel better and i'm still not racist just calling it like oh, wow. it is. So, so she's basically like she's saying, yeah, M- M- Michelle Obama has a monkey face, and she uses Obonic, Ebonics, but I'm not racist though. Just I was always to let y'all know, like I'm not racist. <laughs> and and this is the the funny part about the shit. Like I always find out, you know, I always see white folks where they'll they'll be racist and they're trying to redefine, like, oh well, I'm not really racist. I'm just saying this. I'm just saying that. I'm like, no, you're you're fucking racist. Like I had I had a, a, a conversation with a dude. On Facebook, this white dude talking about, oh, it's not racist if you if you don't intend for it to be racist, it's not racist. I'm like, that makes no fucking sense. So you trying to tell me if you go to uh, steal some some you know some you know TVs out of an electronic store, but you didn't in, intend to be a thief? Does that it makes you not a thief now? You understand? Know so you ain't intend to steal it. It's just that wasn't my intentions to steal it, even though I did. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So, so you can't call me a thief. You know what I mean? Right. Like that's that makes no fucking sense because he was that, that's he said, the white supremacy. It is what it, they say. It, you know? Exactly, and because he was like he said, if you're ignorant to the fact of what you're doing, that doesn't count. So I was like, so if you didn't know you were stealing, that that does that means you're not stealing. No, you you're still stealing. You just wow. didn't know. That's like that's like somebody raping somebody. Well, I didn't know I was raping her. Well, what do you want from me? I'm I didn't know. So I would, so that means I didn't. Like what kind of dumb shit is that? You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. But you know, and it's the funny part though, with this this um this professor in the story, they said that, you know, uh she might lose her job or, you know, get suspended or whatever the fuck it is. And they said that she was she's making over three hundred thousand dollars a year. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, so I'm like, you really trying to fuck your paper up just to just to 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 be racist? Like nigga, like yo, you, you if listen, white people, just be racist in your mind, okay? Just shut the fuck right. up. Like I'm trying to help y'all out, like nigga, because <laughs> because yo, if if that was my wife, you feel me? I'd have been like, listen. Shut the fuck up. I'll be like, listen, just be racist at home. I don't give a fuck. Just bring that money. Just bring that 300000 back to the house because your racism is fucking this paper up. You feel what I'm saying? Exactly. Yep. <laughs> like, yep. yo, racism is fucking niggas' papers up. Like, see, that's it. That's the part of about white supremacy 
that people don't understand is that white supremacy at the end of the day is still is still uh fucking with white people's money you feel what i'm saying because in order to keep that white supremacy because white supremacy you know works a lot on a sort of like a covert basis they're not really sometimes they're not that overt with it you feel what i'm saying so once it becomes overt once when people start like in this in this email or this this post once you start saying some monkey face shit what white supremacy has to do is they have to say, damn, this fucking woman, uh, she she went too far. Now we have to pretend we're not racist and, and penalize her. You feel what I'm saying? Right, so you, right, right. So it's like when you do your racism, <laughs> you have to fucking do that shit on the slick. You feel what I'm saying? Like, right. God damn. Like, I thought, you know. Like, like white people is, are slipping with their racism right now. Like, goddamn. And, like, and why do you, why do you, why did you need it? What what did you say? She, she tweeted it. Yeah, she put it on like her Facebook post. Talking about like why why do you need to put that out there? Exactly. Like, what, what, you exactly. know what I'm saying? Like, how does that improve your life? You know what, that's, what I'm saying? That's I I don't know. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like the the hate is strong that they would be like, look, I'm I'm willing to risk my quarter of a million dollar salary. Just to say this shit, like seriously, like yo, y'all are wild, yo, y'all fucking wild. I'm like, god damn. But anyway, you know that's how that's how shit go. You feel me? But so, real quick, we're gonna get into a, a, a subscriber email. Uh, yeah, super quick, I love these. super quick. Um, before we go into you know go on break. So this one says, "Hey, I met this girl and she's a light skin." Uh, low key chick that looks like Zendaya. I don't know who the fuck Zendaya is, but I don't know. I guess she's decent. Anyway, he says, and I know she gets approached and talks to a lot of guys all the time. Um, I want to know how to separate myself from all these other guys that's trying to get with her. I, I want some key points on what I should do. All right. So look, look, man, first of all, what you should do is not think about this chick. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Like, this is the, this, this is the big mistake I'll be telling you. This is, this is the thing. The fact that you're even, whenever, okay, the, the mistake you're making first is is sending, is is asking a question about one chick or any about one, one chick. About one chick, chick. right. <laughs> because, because by doing that, you're already putting her on a pedestal. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, your question should be more or your thought process to in order for you to even get that one girl and it should be how do i uh improve my skills or how do i work on myself so that i'm attractive to women in general so then that girl is part of the woman in general so then you know it should fall in line in those in those situations but also the second part uh that you got to understand is all you really need to do um you know the essence of it is you have to be a hundred percent yourself. See, this is the problem that guys think. They see a woman and they're like, oh, she's so hot. A whole bunch of guys are trying to get with her. How do I get with her? Because all these other guys are trying to get with her. See, when you when you're saying that question, what you're doing is is that you're putting yourself in the same category as every other guy. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. So you gotta understand that since you are different than every other guy, then it, it shouldn't matter if a million dudes is trying to holler at a chick. You're not any of those guys, and none of those, none of those guys are you. So when you approach her, you're a different type of dude. It's the same way where imagine, okay, let's say if you you're you're chilling and there's a whole bunch of girls that's trying to holler at you, but a lot of the girls that's trying to holler at you are like these average to below average looking chicks. They're kind of whack. You understand what I'm saying? And then there's this one really hot dime chick that's thinking, oh, how can I get with this guy? And then she's like, all these other girls are hollering at him. So why would he want me? You feel what I'm saying? But you're thinking, I would love to be with that Don chick because she's bad. You feel what I'm saying? But that Don chick is thinking, oh, I, I, I don't stand a chance because all these other girls are trying to get with this guy. So it's the same thing when you flip it around. All these dudes is probably trying to get with this girl, but they're not you. You feel what I'm saying? So when you step right. to the plate, you're a different dude. So that so the thing is, if she's feeling you and she sees you, you're going to be the one that stands out if... You're being yourself and being who the fuck you are. What a lot of guys don't understand is that women, generally, 90% of the dudes that holler at women, they're not feeling anyway. So th- those guys aren't even really, um, you know, they're not really options anyway. You feel what I'm saying? So if you got like 10 or 15 dudes trying to holler at one chick, um, you know, she might like maybe one of them, maybe. You feel what I'm saying? And then so when you go up to her, 
You understand? And you doing your thing, then you you could be some new dude that she's feeling, and it don't even matter how many other guys is fucking, you know, trying to holler at her. You feel what I'm saying? So I think like, you know, you guys gotta, you know, first see it from that standpoint. You feel what I mean? And then when right. you see it from that standpoint, all you really need to do is when you approach her, just you know, talk talk to her, put your bid in, and see what it is. And then if she's down with it, she's gonna be down with it. If not, then you know you keep it moving. the 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 problem is, is that when you're building it up or you're putting her on that pedestal, that's the thing that makes it harder. Because once you do actually interact with her, then you're gonna come off or come across like you're like she's this big thing that you're trying to get and trying to impress and trying to get her to like you. Versus you going up to evaluate her, see if she's the type of chick you even really trying to fuck with. And then, you know, you you take it from there. You feel what I'm saying? Because most of these dudes out here, y'all got this super fantasy y'all put, y'all, y'all put on these chicks. And that's the thing that uh, messes it up. Because a lot of times, these women don't even uh, believe they are as awesome as you think they are. You feel what I'm saying? Hey, oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I'm so, that's the thing. They don't that's, like, that's like the statement of the century, man, you for a lot mean? of these dudes, man. So that's what, they, that's what they don't understand. So so now you got to look at it like this. Imagine if I was, if imagine if you, I had a broken, uh, you know, a broken like iPad, right? <clears throat> and you're like, yo, how much for that iPad? How come, how much can I get? Look, I'll give you, uh, 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 two hundred dollars for it, and I'm like, nah, give me like five hundred. You're like, all right, cool, cool. I, I give you five hundred. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm looking at you like you fucking stupid. I'm like, this shit is fucking. Dope. Can't he see the crack in this fucking iPad? Why was he? Give, why was he <laughs> giving me five hundred dollars for this this bullshit? And that's what women are thinking when you sweating them. They're like, why is this guy sweating me so much? Doesn't he realize I'm a fucking crazy bitch? Doesn't he realize that I'm not? I don't look that good under this makeup. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's what. <laughs> And so now she's looking at you like, what? Like, come on, get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh my goodness. But you know, that's what dudes don't understand, man. You got you got to understand how to look at the game from these different perspectives because it's gonna it's gonna make it a little bit more easier for you to uh, navigate in these situations. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Oh man. But listen, we're gonna um take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna get into the topic of how to test women. You guys are listening to the Bad Boy Show. Do you want to learn the easiest way to have more sex with more women? Then get the critically acclaimed book, How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day. In this book, you'll learn everything you need to know about attracting and sleeping with beautiful women. That's How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day. Get your copy today at MrLocario.com. That's M-R-L-O-C-A-R-I-O.com. MrLocario.com. Are you an actor who needs headshots? Do you have an event or a wedding coming up and you need a photographer? If you do, make sure you go to pavionphoto.com. Pavion is a professional photographer who will supply you with high quality video and photography services for any event. Contact him at pavionphoto.com. That's P-A-V-I-O-N photo.com. Pavionphoto.com. All right, people, we are back. We are back. In uh-huh. Yeah, man. So today's topic, we're going to be talking about how to test women, man, how to test these women and, you know, make this shit happen. So first of all, why why do you even test women? What's the point? Why are we doing this? What, 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 what do we mean by this? So basically, when we're talking about testing women, it's basically just to see who you're dealing with and how she will uh, act and react to you. You understand? Because what you need to understand is this, is that um, a lot of women are going to act differently and, you know, present themselves differently depending on the type of guy they're dealing with or, or, you know, who they're dealing with. So, you know, you might be, you might uh, see one chick and she's going to act a certain way to you, and then she's going to act different to me, and then she's probably going to act different to Miles. But the point is, is that you have to figure out how she's reacting to you. You feel what I'm saying? And so this is why you have to test her out to see, you know, how she's going to be. Because a lot of times you'll talk to a girl, and what a lot of what what happens is a lot of guys get confused or they get gassed up thinking that what this girl says she is or how she says she is is how she really is. 
So, but that's not, that's not the truth. You understand what I'm saying? You have to sort of test her. You got to do certain things to see if she actually is what she says she, she is or how she says she is. You feel what I mean? So like sometimes when you talk to girls, you go to a party, you go to an event, you talking to girls on the street, whatever, whatever. And you're having a conversation with her and she'll present herself a certain way, but you're not really, you know, she's not really like that or she might, you know, pretend to be this way or whatever. So the real way you figure out if a chick is down or not, if a chick is cooperating, if a chick is on some bullshit is you have to do little tests to, to see what's popping, right? And it's, right. there's nothing. This is nothing that's even difficult. It's just sort of like you you basically put something out there, and then you see how she reacts to uh, what you put out there. You know what I'm saying? It's really that simple. So, right. for example, let's say if you you know you can test to see if a chick is going to cooperate. So, let's say if you're talking to a girl and you're at a party or something, and you just say you say hey. Um, put your number in my phone, right? And then you hand her your phone so she can put the number in. And now, if she's like, oh, well, you know, how about I get you, how about you give me your number and, you know, I'll call you. You feel what I'm saying? Now, that's a test right there. You're testing to see how she, how well she's going to cooperate with giving you the number and, you know, and just being cooperative from the jump. So her saying, hey, how about, you know, I get your number instead and blah, 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 blah. That is showing you that she's not cooperating. You understand what I'm saying? So now you've already marked her in your mind as, okay, this chick ain't on really cooperating. You feel what I'm saying? Like she's, she's showing already that she's uncooperative. You see what I mean? Because right. the thing is, is that, and I said this in another video I did a, a couple of days ago, is that when a woman is really, 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 really feeling you, when she's really mm -hmm. feeling you, She's going to do yep. what you say, period, period. Unless, you know, like I said, unless you say some crazy shit, like you're not going to go tell her to, you know, go in the store and steal something. I'm talking about the regular shit. Like you're like, hey, give me your number and let's do this. If she's really feeling you, she's going to comply and do it because um, what happens is that a lot of women run into men who they don't, they're not into. So when they actually run into a guy who they're really feeling they want it to work badly. They're like, oh, finally, I found a guy I really, I'm really, i really feeling. So they're, they're going to make the shit super easy for you. They're going to cooperate super, you know, quickly. And that's what it's going to be. So when, you, when you're saying, hey, give me your number, and she doesn't do it, then it's showing that she's uncooperative. You feel what I'm saying? So that's, that's one way to test it. Another thing to do, you know, is in, in, in another, like, compliance test is, like, let's say, if you're at, um, I used to do this a lot where I'll be at a bar or something like that. And like, let's say I'm standing at the bar and the girls may be sitting on the stool at the bar and we're talking and I might say some shit like, Hey, stand up. I want to see how tall you are. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Right. And then, so I, then I'll see if she's actually, she'll actually get up and stand up and, you know, and, and, uh, be, you know, stand next to me. Right. Then I would sit back on her chair and then I would tell her to like, you know, like either depending on if it's like a like a small chair or stool or whatever, let's say we're at a little table, I'll sit on her chair and then I'll tell her to sit on my lap. You feel what I'm saying? So then if she sits on my lap, that's showing that she's, you know, basically complying to what I'm saying. She's actually listening to what I'm saying. And that's a test to see how into me she is. You feel what I'm saying? And how comfortable right. she is, you know, uh, being touchy feely and all that other shit. You feel what I'm saying? So it's just little things that you do and then you see how she reacts and then you sort of mark that down in your mind and say, okay, this is how she, you know, she's, she's, she's complying with this. She's, she's cool with this. You feel what I'm saying? And, and you, you got, you gotta, you gotta really pay attention too because chicks, chicks are very deceptive. I right, mean, exactly. when you meet them, they're wearing makeup, they're wearing heels, mm -hmm. they're wearing, they're wearing like, you know, a lot of these chicks have got freak hair. Right, um, right. <laughs> fake eyelashes um and I, I don't care what race they are like all all types of chicks all of them are fake when they are like pretty <laughs> you much, know what I'm saying pretty much so, and in and, 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 and a lot of ways you have to kind of really pay attention to the compliance because you have a lot of chicks who are up on game mm -hmm. and you'll tell them you know give me your number and you end up just getting their email, but the way they talk to you, like the way they deal with you, right? You feel like they're in compliance, mm -hmm. but now you're the one. You just you just walked away with her email, 
and you think you you know you think you did something. You think she's feeling you. Right, thing. right, right. Exactly. You hear what I'm saying? Exactly. Like there's you know there's a reason why a restaurant like Hooter exists. There's a reason why you know people use women in such a way that they do. Like I know a guy personally. I know a guy who sells jewelry, and his he has a friend who who um who has a she has he has like a model wife like she. She looks like a model, like she's just a bad bitch, straight up and down. Right, right. And he he literally brings her to uh, meetings where he's selling he's selling like really high priced jewelry to a big client. Mm-hmm. He'll just bring her to to literally just sit there with like while he while he while he's in the meeting with the um <laughs> with the client about wow. the jewelry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right. You you met her, you met her, you, you remember you remember when we we did that little shoot and we you know we 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 took the pictures and we you know we put them up on the site and then right, you know right, right. you remember, remember right yeah I know I know you yeah, talking about was, and, and remember he, we were talking to him and he called her a secret weapon right right exactly you know and it's not it's it's not about nothing more than when there's a beautiful woman around men sometimes we lose our like we lose our focus a little mm-hmm. bit you see what I'm saying right. So then, if you you go into the meeting thinking you was gonna pay only ten thousand ten thousand for the piece of jewelry, you end up paying you know twelve twelve or fifteen thousand. You understand right, what I'm saying? Right, exactly. It don't seem like much, but that's that's two thousand dollars or five thousand dollars more, my nigga. Like that's mm-hmm. that's actually another piece of jewelry or something. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. It's true. So you know, be be careful, and this is why you have to remember that you're the one running the show. Like like we were saying on the other show about you know. You, you, you know, you got to kind of evaluate because it, it, that's what these tests are really about. It's not like it's not like you're testing and you're just playing games with these bitches. No, right. like you're trying to really evaluate. Like, yo, is this chick everything that she says she is? Exactly, exactly. Real talk. That's <laughs> and that's what it is. Like, and that's why a lot of dudes get caught up because they don't know how to um to 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 really test the chick to see what you know what she's about, what she's made of, like what she's gonna do. You feel what I'm saying? Right. Because like so even the guy, yeah. the guy, the guy who who sent in the, e- the the subscriber email that you spoke about in the last segment of the show, right? He he should really be listening to this, like like exactly. Really take notes for me because that 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 one measly fucking chick that you think is cute and all that, and you you know you send in questions for her and you know just for her alone and all. Yo, talk to that bitch. You probably realize you didn't even like her, man. Like exactly, you know exactly, and that's the thing. That's the thing. Dudes don't understand, like. What you, you gotta you gotta really see what she's about to actually see if she's worth what you think she's worth. You feel what I'm saying? Like, and that's the thing that dudes don't, they don't see because you know when you get so caught up in oh she's hot and I just want to hit it and yeah that's cool. But at the end of the day, you still gotta sort of see who you're dealing with because if you get so involved with a certain chick, you know it, you you, you want to know you know what this chick is about and how she responds to certain things and how she's gonna be. Because that's going to directly affect you and what you're trying to do with whatever you're trying to get done. You feel what I'm saying? So it's, you know, it's a lot of different things, right? And like another right. thing that, um, another way to, to test a chick is to, you got to have some flirtatious talk. And, and the more sexual, the better. So basically, let's say if you, and, and this is just to see how comfortable she is, um, you know, with sex and, and, and just in different situations. So See, there's a difference between talking to a chick or flirting with her in front of people, especially her friends, and then doing it where it's you, you and her are just sort of alone, technically. Now, and, and when I say alone, you don't necessarily need to be in like a room by yourself, but like you're away from other people. So what I do, what I usually do, or what I used to do a lot is where I would meet, like I'll be at a party or an event or something, and I see a group of girls, and then I'll talk to all the girls, and then the you know, I start basically saying some sexual shit. You feel what I'm saying? Like, and like, I would start off maybe a little slow, but then I'll, I'll turn it up a little bit because I want to see their reactions to me, to what I'm saying. And and I want to see their reactions, especially in, in the group of their friends. You feel what I'm saying? Because if a chick, if you're talking sexual, if you're flirting or whatever, and a chick is really, really comfortable with you doing that, you feel what I'm saying? It, it, it shows that she's at a different uh, level of consciousness than most other women because a lot of times when you talk like that 
most other women are looking for signs from their other friends to see if it's okay for them to respond to that type of, you know, interaction. You feel what I'm saying? And then right. so, so you, you, there's a difference between talking to them in front of their friends versus if you pull her to the side and then, you know, you pull that one particular girl to the side and you start talking all that flirtation shit and then she might be responsive or she might still be not responsive even when you're pulling to the side and y'all are alone. So what it, what it's doing is sort of, it's telling you, um, if this is the type of chick you need to, you know, move forward with, you understand? Because if you're right. talking to a girl by herself or you pull it to the side and her friends is on the other side of the club, but you, you know, you with her and you're like, yo, you know, you're looking kind of good. You know what? We need to exchange numbers because, you know, we need to make something happen. And now let's say you're, 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 uh, you're starting to like touch her a little bit. You're touching her hand. You sort of have her, her, your arm around her. And if she's like being receptive to it, then it's like, okay, I'm seeing this girl's receptive to it. So she's most likely the type of chick that I'll, you know, I could be able to smash either, you know, tonight or the next week or something, you know, there's a good possibility that something could happen with this chick. So let me move forward versus if you're doing that and she's sort of like, oh, I don't, you know, like she's, she's feeling awkward or uncomfortable by you being sexual, you understand, or saying sexual things or even being offended by you saying sexual things. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And then so now you're like, okay, well, I'm not really going to fuck with this chick like that because she, you know, she, she's on that other shit. So all this time, all you're doing is really just testing her to see how she's going to respond. You feel what I'm saying? How she's going to respond to you being, you know, uh, sexual with her. You feel what I mean? And another thing real quick is, and this is sort of in the same vein, is that, you know, you have to be uh, extremely honest with chicks uh, sometimes when, because this is the thing it's two schools of thought here there's one school of thought where it says you know don't say certain things to women uh, because if you say certain things you're going you might offend them and then that's going to take them out of the feeling of want to fuck with you you understand what I'm saying so let's say you're trying to smash a chick that night you saying certain things might talk you out the pussy you feel what I'm saying but then there's another school of thought that says Talk your shit and then see if the chick is going to be feeling that. And then if she is, then you know, okay, this is the chick you really want to fuck with. So it, it all depends on what you're trying to do. I actually like the latter, meaning I, I, I in a lot of cases, I'm just going to talk my shit and fuck with the chick who is going to be cool or who can take me talking my shit. You feel what I'm saying? That's the one I'm really right. looking for. You feel what I'm saying? Because I'm looking for if you're strong enough to deal with uh, a dude who can talk that shit. Because to me, if you're not, then I have no use for you. You feel what I'm saying? So, right. so that's the thing. Like, and, and a lot of times what happens is, is that you got to sort of see, you got to, uh, you know, pick your battles because let's say if you're out of town and you're talking to this chick and you know, she's on some goofy shit. So you're like, you know, I'm not going to go too hard on this in this chick because we at this spot and, and I know I could fuck tonight and then bounce tomorrow and do what I got to do. So I'm just going to make that happen versus if, you know, you're just chilling, you're like, you know, I'm just trying to see what's good with this chick or see what's good with that chick. And I'm just going to do my thing. And then if she's down, cool, if she's not, whatever. But uh, at the same time, you're still uh, testing them. You understand what I'm saying? To see what it is. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it's always right. that constant, like, test to see what's, what's popping. You feel what I'm saying? And so that's, you know, that's the thing that you, you know, you definitely, you definitely could do. You feel me? And, and, and the last thing I wanted to say real quick before we get out of here, um, one other thing that's really good to, to test chicks, and this is how you can sort of test to see, or, and at the same time, get a chick to sort of invest in you. So this is what you do. If you, let's say if you meet a chick and y'all, uh, you know, this is when you're first dating and let's say she's supposed to come to your crib, Right. What you do is, while she's on the way to your crib, you tell her, hey, um, can you pick up something at this store on your way? You feel what I'm saying? So she, so she has to make a stop to go get whatever she needs to get before she comes to your spot. It, it could be anything like, yo, can you pick up uh, some soda? I need you to pick up like two two uh, big bottles of Coke, Coca-Cola, and, and you know, before you come through. You feel what I'm saying? So you're getting her to to sort of do stuff for you. You feel what I'm saying? Now, if and, and, and what's good about this is that you're getting her to make the stop. Um, you're getting her to spend her own money. You feel what I'm saying? 
And so now it's like, she feels like, okay, she's investing time, energy, and money into you, which will make her sort of like attach herself more to you because now she's, you know, she's doing more shit. So on a subconscious level, she feels like she's, you know, doing it. But also if you do tell her this to do this and you feel any sort of resistance or any sort of pushback or um, any sort of, uh, you know, and, and this is what you also should do too. This is and what you should do is this, when she gets to your crib, ask her, say, oh, how much is all of that? And then you attempt to give her some money for it. Now, if she takes the money, then again, this is another test. If she takes the money, it's showing you that she's not really, like, it's not that she's not into you, but she's not as into you as if she says, nah, I'm good. You know, don't worry about it. You feel what I'm saying? Right. Because right. that's showing like, she's really like, Hey, no, I got this. Like I, I like you and I want you so bad. I want to show you how much I like you that I don't even want your money. I want you like, that's what it is. Like I'm, I, I'm happy to go and stop and spend my money and do whatever I need to do to please you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. That's what you got to look out for. So this is what I'm saying. Like all of this stuff is you sort of just testing to see, you know, the type of uh, uh, chick that you're dealing with. You feel what I'm saying? That's all, there, that's all this really is so that you can make better informed decisions. If you want to continue to see this chick or if you want to, you know, call it a day with her or whatever it is, you feel what I mean? Right. So that's right. what it is because a chick like to me, if you, especially when guys be always asking you like, yo, I want to, you know, how do you get a girlfriend? I want a girlfriend. To me, girlfriend material is the type of chick where if I tell her to come get some shit for me and while she's on the way to the crib and she buys the shit and she comes back and she's like, nah, I got it. It's, it's all good. You ain't got, you know what I mean? That's more That's girlfriend, girlfriend you, you, Exactly. You feel what I'm saying? That's the type <laughs> of shit. You know what I mean? They just make it too easy for these girls, man. That's, That's what, really what it is. Right. That's, what That's really what it is. Like, if more, if more cats would do the type of stuff you're talking about right now, like, I think the dating game would be a little bit better because, you know, because it's so easy for these chicks nowadays, they, they literally think all they got to do is, like, be pretty. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, exactly. Like, they don't have to invest nothing. They, I mean, should have the time. They don't even have to fucking, you know, uh, call you back or show up to where they said they was going to meet you at type of thing. That's why chicks are so flaky these days. Because, right. it's like, I can I can stand you up and still have, like, 10 other niggas trying to holler at me. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. But if more dudes was, like, Putting, you know, putting chicks through these, you know, type of qualifications, chicks would be up more on point. You see what I'm saying? Right, right, exactly. And 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 they would they would waste less niggas' time because since they feel like it doesn't matter, you know, they could they could tell mad niggas anything. You know, like a, a lot of times you'll get a chick's number and then you call no answer or you know or you'll make a date and they flake and it's like that's because dudes dudes is making it way too easy for these guys. Exactly, real talk, real fucking talk. And that's why, and the thing is that when you, when you start testing them, you know, it, it, it's, it's a different type of energy because now it, it goes from you just like, oh, you're here and I want to get with you and you're so hot and I'll do anything to please you and make sure it goes from that to where there's like a, 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 a little, it's like a middleman between you and her. And that middleman is that test that she got to go through to get to you. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And so it gives you a whole different uh, vibe than, and, and than all these other guys who just sort of like, is all willy nilly with the shit. You understand? So now you're letting her, you know, you're seeing like, okay, is she doing this? Is she not doing this? Like, you know, uh, like, let me, you, you have to show me something before I make this, you know, final decision. This is why even when I tell guys, uh, sometimes to, you know, give a girl your number, you know what it is. It, the thing is, is that what, what, what that does is you're telling her, Hey, hit me up because I'm still sort of, uh, thinking about if I want to fuck with you. And you can even tell a chick that because sometimes chick, you, you tell a chick, hey, here's my number. Give me a call. And they'll be like, oh, what do you mean? Like, you're supposed to call me. I'm the I'm the girl. That's how it's that's how it works. And blah, blah, blah. And be like, nah, listen, miss, you know, you, you know, you cool and everything. But I'm still I'm still sort of, you know, trying to figure out if I'm feeling you. So what I want you to do is I want you to call me uh, on Monday and by that time, you know, if, if, if everything seems cool, then we'll make it happen. You feel what I'm saying? Imagine right. how that seems versus a guy like, yo, ma, let me get your number, but please, I'll holler at you. Let me, you know, we, I think blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? So, so now she's like, she's looking at you like, you know, if you're saying, if you're saying, hey, you know, here's my number, give me a call. You know, I'm still, I'm still trying to, you know, see what's popping. I'm not really too sure yet, but you know, we'll see what, go, we'll see what happens. You, you feel me? Now you become more of that challenge. 
you get you get her thinking because she's like, damn, I, I've never met a guy who came at it like that. You understand what I'm saying? And then and then what it does is that it makes her sort of say, okay, wow, I want to see uh, if I can get this guy. I want to see if I, you know, I can make this thing happen. And you you already stand out from 99% of the dudes by just doing that one thing. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And right. so that's the that's the thing you gotta you know you gotta really flip that shit. You feel me? But um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Anything else you want to say, Miles, before we get out of here? Yo, www.badboymembership.com, www.undeniablegame.com. Exactly. Get on it and stop playing. Exactly, people. All right, so listen, um, we're going to holler at you guys, um, you know, next week. And remember, and I talked about this on my live stream, that the Bad Boy membership, the price mm. is going to go up in 2017 so early 2017 is going to go up i'm going to make an announcement and if you are on the bad boy membership now which the price is 24.97 it will stay 24.97 for you so this is why i suggest that you join the bad boy membership before january 2017 because if you join before you're going to get the 24.97 price and you'll stay with that price forever as long as you stay a bad boy member but if you get it right. after 2017 once the price goes up you're going to have to get it on the price that's you know more more money you feel what i'm saying so make sure that you join the bad boy membership by the end of december okay so you can get the the price so whoever's on the membership now you guys are going to stay at the same price but for any new members after, you know, on 2017, it's going to go up. You feel me? So we're just, we're letting you know now. So don't, don't say we didn't warn you. Okay. <laughs> so, so it, you know, it is what it is. So definitely try to, you know, get on that stuff right now. You feel me? All right. So that's pretty much it guys. We are out of here. Remember the truth is inside you. We're gone later. Hey, what's up? It's dating and life coach Mr. Locario. Go to badboymembership.com and master the dating game by joining my Bad Boy Membership Program. In this program, you'll receive 45 through 90 minute, easy to follow, step by step dating advice tutorials that's guaranteed to help you attract, date, and have sex with beautiful women. Join the Bad Boy Membership today by going to badboymembership.com. That's badboymembership.com.